Okay guys, so today we are going to go over your test three. Number one, if um, x comma three is the solution to the equation, then what is the value of x? So here I am looking for x and I know that y equals three because that's what I'm given. So I'm gonna plug in what I know into my equation. And so I'm going to end up with 4x plus 2 times 3 minus 22 equals 0. And 2 times 3 is 6, so I have 6 minus 22 equals 0. I have 4x plus, and so then I'm going to have 4x minus 16 is going to equal 0. Now my goal is to get all the variables on one side and my numbers on the other side. I'm going to leave my 4x on my right, no, on my left. And I'm going to move the 16 over to the right. The way I move anything is by doing the opposite operation. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. And I'm left with 4x equals 16. And to get that x by itself, I do the opposite operation. I divide by 4. And so I end up with x equals 4. And so my answer here is C is 4. Which of the following is always a correct conclusion about the function y equals 2x squared? Okay, so to figure this out, I need to look at a table. And I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to grab my calculator. And... I am going to go to y equals, and y equals I'm going to put 2x squared, and I'm just going to look at my table values. So I'm going to press second, graph, and I'm just going to go through my answer choices. So variable y is never negative, so just going through, regardless of how negative my number is, or how big my positive number is, um, I can just see that my y is never going to be negative. So let's look at the other ones. The x is never negative? Nope. I can plug in whatever I want for x, even negative numbers. The variable x is always less than the variable y. Not really. When x is 0, y is 0. They're the same, so they're not. x is not always less than y. And the variable y is always 4 times the variable x, well, negative 2 times 4 would be negative 8, not positive 8. So all my answer choices are wrong except for a. 3, give the domain and the range. Okay, so remember, x and y went to the doctor. So if I'm looking at domain, that means I'm looking at my x value. And in this case, the x happens to be negative 2, 0, and 2. That automatically eliminates us as a and b. My range, I'm looking at my y values, but sometimes instead of saying y, they'll say f of x. And so my range is 4 and 0. So that leaves me only with c as my answer. Okay, so number four, we're being asked to solve this inequality. And so I'm just going to do this as fast as I can. I have negative 3x plus 2.5x is less than or equal to 4.5, and that's not going to work. I'm going to distribute this negative, this positive 1.5. So I end up with negative 3 point, negative 3x plus 2.5x is less than or equal to 1.5x plus 6. And I'm going to combine my like terms on both sides of my inequality. 1.3x plus 2.5x is the same as negative 0.5x. 
which is less than or equal to. I don't have any light terms on this side, so I'm just going to bring these down. And now I want to move the 1.5x to the other side so that I can leave my 6 on the right. And that way I can put all my x's on one side and all my positive and all my variables on the other. To move it, I have to do the opposite operation, which is to subtract 1.5x. And so I'm left with 6 on the right, and this is going to give me negative 2x on the left. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, which means I'm left with x is a negative 3. Because I divided by a negative number, I flip the sign, and right away I see that my answer is b. Number 5. What is the range of the function in the graph shown below? So remember, if I'm looking at range, I'm looking at the y values because when x, when I look at the chart x and y went to the doctor, um, I see that my when I look at range, I look I'm looking at the y values. So here I'm going to focus specifically on the y-axis, and um, here I can see that I'm using one, two, three, three positive three on the y-axis all the way to positive infinity because I have arrows that are pointing up. So my range is going to go from 3 to infinity. I'm looking at the y values and I am using 3 so I am going to put a less, I mean a line underneath my less than next to the 3 and it doesn't really matter if I put a, a line underneath the infinity or not. If I just ignore the infinity part of this. I can see right away that my answer has to be D. Oh, nope, nope, nope. It is not D. Here, if you think of this as a crocodile, the crocodile wants to eat the Y because we're using all the numbers that are bigger than 3. So, it, they flip them. So um, the only answer that makes sense is C because the crocodile also wants to eat the Y, not the 3. 3 is the smallest number that you're going to use in the range. So your crocodile should be facing the 3, not the... I mean, should be facing the Y, not the 3. So the correct answer is C. Number 6. Um, in order to save time, I'm just going to look at answer choice B. So for this answer choice, I mean for this problem, we're trying to decide which set of ordered pairs has a linear pair function. That means we have to look at the rate of change. So I'm going to begin by first making myself a table. Um, I have, if I'm looking at just B, I have 1, 5, 2, 6. 3, 6, and 4, 8. To go from 1 to 2, I add 1. To go from 2 to 3, I add 1. To go from 3 to 4, I add 1. To go from 5 to 6, I add 1. To go from 6 to 6, I add 0. And from 6 to 8, I add 2. So I can see that my rate of change, which is the change in the y over the change in the x, it's going to be 1 divided by 1, which is 1. 0 divided by 1, which is 0. And 2 divided by 1, which is 2. My rate of change is different for all three of them, which means that this is not linear. That would actually mean that it is quadratic. So B is not our answer. So I'm just going to go ahead and try C. I have my x and my y. I'm looking at negative 2 and 1, 1 and negative 1, 3 and negative 4, 5 
five and six. To go from negative two to one, I have three. To go from one to three, I have two. To go from one to negative one, I have to subtract two. To go from negative one to negative four, I have to add three. And right away, I can already see that that is not going to be linear because negative two divided by three is negative two over three, and three over two is three over two. They're different numbers, so that's not my answer either. So maybe I should have tried A. Maybe A is my answer after all. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to A. I'm going to start by drawing myself a table. I have 0 and 1, 3 and 4, 6 and 7, and 10 and 11. To go from 0 to 3, I add 3. I add 3 to go from 1 to 4. I add 3 to go to three to, from 3 to 6. I add 3 to go from 4 to 7. And I add 4 to go from 6 to 10. And I add 4 to go from 7 to 11. So my rate of change would be 3 divided by 3 for the first two. 3 divided by 3. And 3 divided by 3. And then 4 divided by 4, which is the same thing as 1. So I can see that my rate of change for all these points is the same. It is 1. And because of that, I can say that answer choice A is linear. Since the rate of change is the same. Okay, so I should have started working out with A. Because that's my answer, but I tried to go fast. I thought B was going to be the answer, but it wasn't. Number seven, what is the relationship between the average test scores and days after in the scatter plot? So we can see automatically that the points are going down, which means that I'm having a negative correlation. It means that the, the more days that you're absent, the lower your test scores, which makes sense. Um, this is a negative correlation, and the answer is C, because all the points are going down. Number eight, give a formula for the number of dots in the nth figure in the sequence. So you need to start by first making your table. I'm going to have four n's because I have four different pictures. One, two, three, four. Number one, I have one dot. Number two, I have three dots. Then I have six dots. And finally, I have ten dots. So which of these? will give me the same table and let's try C. I'm going to put each answer choice in my calculator. So I'm going to go to Y equals and I'm just going to start by working out C. I hope C is the answer. I'm not sure. I have 1 divided by 2, x, parentheses, x plus 1, second, graph, and if I plug in 1, I do get 1 out, if I plug in 2, I get 3 out, which is what I want, and if I plug in 3, I should get out 6, which I do. And lastly, if I plug in 4, I get out 10. I, should, I get 1, 3, 6, and 10. And that is what I have on my table. 1, 3, 6, and 10. So my answer is C. Which of these scatter plots shows a positive correlation? In this problem, my answer is going to be the one that um, all the dots are going up. And there's only one where the dots are going up, that is answer choice A. So here the answer is A, because all the dots are going up.